Hello and welcome to the second video in the Arducopter Pixhawk Mission Planner series. Now, the last time uh, we did the introduction, again, links to all the videos that are in this little beginners series down below. Uh, this, over the next three or four videos, we're going to actually uh, flash the Pixhawk and get it ready to install inside the multi-rotor, which is what this video is. Then we'll install it, then we'll go through the test flight procedure and the final video in this beginner series will be like an FAQ to collect all the questions that you ask. So if you have a question about this stuff, please pop it in the comments down below. I'll collect them up, try and cover them as I go through the series. And the ones that I don't cover through the series or still seem to be confusing people, I'll match up at the end with the FAQ. Now, everything that I am going through and showing in this series is already documented in the Ardu Pilot Wiki. I'll put a link again down below. Every single step that I'm going to go through, everything I'm going to show you, is detailed in quite some depth in the Ardu Copter documentation. So whenever you are not sure about anything or you are planning on doing this, I would recommend putting aside half an hour, getting yourself a fresh cup of tea or coffee and reading through the entire thing. Now the steps I'm going to go through are slightly out of phase. That's just because for me, I tend to find that this is the way that works. A calibration of the accelerometers is easier before you put it onto the multi-rotor, so you're not kind of throwing things around. Uh, there are a couple of changes, and I'll go through those in a moment. Uh, last time you may have uh, spotted there's a Ardu plane series on the channel as well uh, that I've just finished doing. So again, using modern components. That was using a black cube. This time I'm using an orange cube. But there's some other differences too, and I'll cover those in a moment. So thank you for sticking with the series. Let's crack on, get this Pixhawk set up, and get it ready to install in the next video into the multi-rotor itself. This video and series has been made with the kind help and support of 3DXR. 3DXR.co.uk are based here in the UK, up in the northeast of England. And for me, they're the go-to place for anything that's Pixhawk, Mission Planner or Ardu Pilot related. They stock a full range of Pixhawk style flight controllers, a wide range of T-Motor, ESCs, motors and props, and also have a full range of sensors for your Pixhawk builds as well, particularly things like the Lightware and Bennywake LiDAR and rangefinders. In addition to all the Pixhawk technology for both multi-rotors and fixed wing, they also stock a full range of radio gear from people like FreeSky and others, and also stock a wide range of FPV equipment. So if you're looking for telemetry radio, super accurate GPS, sensors, Pixhawk, large-scale UAV systems, then check out 3DXR. There's a link in the description. So let me cover the pieces that I am using. I'm using this Hexoon EDU450 frame. Now, the reason for this frame is that it's a nice solid frame and it's something that education lots of other people use. Some people might look at this and think, oh, it looks a little bit old fashioned, but this comes as a kit with the motors, ESCs, everything you need. You just need to get yourself some kind of Pixhawk that you can put in it. Again, assembly is pretty straightforward. So in the next video, I don't have to labor that. That too much but the other thing about this is this is one of the reference platforms for Pixhawk so the tuning is also there inside Mission Planner so we can turn that on. The other thing that's different this time is that we are using a, uh, a slightly different carrier which is this one so the carriers there's loads of different size there's mini ones there's ones for multi rotors this is the ADSB carrier board now as you'll spot there's a little antenna on it and that receives transmissions from other aircraft it's a receive only ADSB uh, piece of kit and on the mission planner screen you'll actually see all the local aircraft I'll show you that in a future video so I'm under the flight path on the approach to Manchester Airport where I am right now so I should be hopefully be able to show you all of those guys going in for an approach to land or coming out of Manchester Airport on their travels now that's actually very good to because the UAV and you will know if there's any other aircraft around so long as they're broadcasting ADS-B the other thing that we're using this time is the Cube Orange. Now the Cube Orange is um, a more standard version now, has a H7 processor which is more powerful. The Black Cube that I used in the Ardu Plane series uh, is still absolutely a valid choice, but the Orange Cube is more the default choice when you're putting something like this together. 
Again, it has things like the heated elements inside, multiple redundant accelerometers, gyroscopes, and everything else. Now, we could use another kind of Pixhawk. It's just as I covered in the Ardu Plane series. Uh, the steps that we're going to go through is identical, regardless of what Pixhawk you are putting it onto. Or even if you're not using a Pixhawk, you can install Ardu Copter onto non-Pixhawk hardware you'll notice that the GPS is connected in a different way from what you may have seen before. Normally the GPS plugs into the GPS port, the clue was in the name, but this time it's the latest version of the GPS that's shipping with these kits. This time it is connected via CAN bus. So there is a cable coming out of the CAN bus connector into a CAN bus hub and that is then connecting into the GPS. Now this allows you to connect lots and lots of sensors up to the Pixhawk and you can plug them in side by side. CAN bus is a very bulletproof technology that's been used in the car industry for a very long time and there are two CAN buses on this Pixhawk cube carrier board that I'm using here uh, so th that's the only other difference. So with all that said, the first thing we need to do is to just make a model memory on the radio before we get too far into this so that the setup goes nice and smooth. So the order of the channels that you need on your radio can be changed, but there is a default order which makes it very simple and straightforward to go through the radio calibration, which we'll do in a moment. That is all outlined, surprise surprise, in the RD Pilot documentation. Again, links down below. So now that we know the order that we, they should be in, let me jump onto my QX7 radio and I'll show you how I've got it set up. So let me press the page and to go across. Uh, I've set the fail safe when I'm going to bind it to the receiver to no pulses for now. Um, the RD pilot should notice because we're being connected by SBUS that something horrible has gone wrong. In the mixer we need to match that order from the wiki. So aileron or roll, elevator, pitch, throttle and rudder for your are in that order with the modes on channel 5. Modes needs to be on channel 5 for copter. By default it's on channel 8 for plane, so that's a slight difference. Be aware of that. Again, you can change that in the settings, but if you set it like this, then it'll work. The only other thing to draw your attention to is that I've reversed the output for the pitch or elevator control on channel two. And we need that because it actually appears to work in the wrong direction, and reversing it on the radio is the best way to do it. Now, we are going to attach the receiver to the Pixhawk carrier board using an SBUS cable like this. So make sure that your receiver is bound and we are ready to start plugging things together and flashing and setting up everything. Top tip if you are setting up a Pixhawk is to download and install the latest version of Mission Planner. Even if you've had Mission Planner on your PC before, I would recommend uninstall it and then reinstall this latest and greatest version and then all the drivers will work and the process should be as easy as I'm about to show. So here we are in Mission Planner. I'm going to go into Setup and Install Firmware. Now we're going to need to plug in the Pixhawk via a USB cable. We're not going to need any other power. That's going to power the GPS. It's going to power the receiver and everything. So back on the computer, I'm then going to have to find out which USB port it is. That one. And then with that set, I can choose any of these firmwares. I'm going to choose the multi-rotor, the quadcopter one, hit go, and away it goes. It's that easy. It should auto-detect the cube and start to flash everything. Now, while it's flashing, it won't do anything. There's no lights or anything. I'm not speeding this process up. I'm showing you the process in real time. And again, while this is actually flashing, there's no LEDs on the GPS. You notice the GPS isn't turning on at the moment. The only little LED that's on, there's a little orange one underneath the cube that you can just spot if I cut my hand over it. Now, if you're having any problems with drivers or flashing, then the recommendation is going to be install the latest version of Mission Planner. That's the vast majority of problems that I see at this stage. Now, it's telling me to wait for the confirmation tones. If I had a little piezoelectric buzzer plugged into this, it would beep to me when it's booted. I'll know when it's done that because we'll get the confirmation lights, hopefully on the GPS. There we go. 
red and blue flashing is the initialization and that is ready to go fantastic so i'll click ok and that looks very very happy now with the orange cube you'll notice something weird there's two com ports one of those is to talk to the cube itself over Mavlink and the other one is to talk to the GPS over the CAN bus. So we're going to select the first one and connect to it. All the information is going to come across and if I lift the nose of the cube I should see it moving in the screen. The GPS is all lit up. We are looking in very very good shape. Indeed everything has configured up beautifully. However there are a couple of potential gotchas if you are setting this up. So let me show you where you can change things like the GPS CAN bus settings, the external LEDs, and also to disable the external safety switch, which you'll need to do if you are using a CAN bus GPS at the moment. So what you need to do is in the config menu, go into the full parameter tree, uh, just accept the warning. And what we're gonna do is we're going to look for all the CAN bus stuff that you'll need to turn on or enable if you find that your GPS doesn't automatically burst into life. So I'm going to search for CAN and that will show me all of them. So the CAN P1 and CAN P2 are the two CAN bus outputs and at the moment my CAN P1 is set to 1 which is enabled, it's the first driver. So that will mean that the GPS is working fine. Now if I search for GPS underscore type then I can set the type to be a UAV CAN connected GPS and then it will expect to find the GPS on there and look for it as well. So make sure that GPS underscore type is set to 9 and that should then burst into life. We'll search for LED types and again make sure that UAV CAN is selected and then it will flash the LEDs on the external module as well. Again, for me, all of this was set up automatically, but this is just where you go in case yours doesn't work in exactly the same way. And then finally, the last one is the external safety switch. I'll search for BRD underscore safety, and then we can see that the BRD underscore safety enable is set to zero, which is disabling the external safety switch, which is the uh, thing that you press before you can arm it. With it disabled, we can arm it directly from the radio without any problems at all. So with that all done, we can start to do the basic configuration. So the first thing I recommend you do is to stick the GPS on top of the cube so the compasses are aligned. This is gonna make the compass calibration an awful lot easier. Doing all of this before we install it into the model is gonna make the accelerometer calibration a lot simpler too. The trick is to line up both of the arrows on the compass GPS hook with the cube and just stick it on the top. Now we're gonna remove this when we're finished, but that should hopefully make sure that the compass calibration when we get to it goes absolutely brilliantly. So now we're ready to go onto the computer and do everything. So on the PC in Mission Planner, we need to go into the Setup tab and go into the mandatory hardware. Now each of these steps are what we're gonna to have to go through in order to have everything set up. And we're gonna start at the very top. Frame type is where we can choose the type of layout. Now we have a quad X frame that we're gonna put it on, so that's the one that I need to select. You can choose lots of different types from in here. Gonna go into accelerometer calibration first of all, and we're gonna go through the top piece. Now it's gonna to have to sit level for this, and I would also recommend having some kind of box to help. So uh, we clicked on it, it says place it level. Can't quite place it level because I've got this stuff stuck to the bottom. So I'm just quickly move that, pop it level on the table, and click done. It's going to say now put it onto its left hand side. Now to see which is the front and which is the left, and this is where having like a little box can help to keep it all at right angles. Put it on its left and click done. On its right hand side, so we'll flip it over. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly at 90 degrees. Try and keep it as still as you possibly can and just keep working your way through. So we need to have it nose down, which is like that. Click go. Having the carrier boards and the cube makes this an awful lot easier. It's going to be slightly tricky. Nose up. Let me see if I can... It kind of needs to be like that. Probably just easy for me to hold it. I'll just pop that out of the way. Click done and then put it on its back that's easy again hold it onto the table click done 
and it'll tell me that the calibration is successful. So that is all sorted. Again, might be worthwhile doing it when it's in the model, but for now that's fine. Next job then is to go through the compass calibration. Now we're going to have to go uh, through the kind of the, the slightly less graphically interesting one, but I'm going to click on start. And what I need to do is then rotate the compass sizz, because there's actually two of them. There's one the external puck and one inside the cube, and just keep rolling it and rolling it around, roll it around each axis, uh, and just keep going until it says OK. Now, one of them's going to go and calibrate up quite quickly. The other one's going to take a little bit of time. Now, compass calibration is one of those things that is recommended that you do at the field before you fly. Uh, this will kind of just prove that the compasses are all okay and working fine and the offsets and everything will be stored. But before you fly, always go through a compass calibration at the field because doing it indoors like this uh, near lots of other metal objects is going to be okay, but it isn't going to give me as good a compass calibration as it would do doing it outside in the middle of a field. The compass gives us a direction. Now, although you can get away with disabling the compass on things like a fixed wing model, because it should, in theory, always be flying forward, uh, with a multi-rotor, it can fly in any direction. So the compass is really important. So there we go. It has done. So click OK, and it's going to tell us that we're going to need to reboot it. So what we'll do is I'll just disconnect and then unplug the Pixhawk. Give it a couple of seconds and then plug it back in and power it up. There are a number of things like even setting up like the power module, which we'll do in the next video, uh, that when you do it, you tend to have to reboot the Pixhawk. If you change anything inside Mission Planner and it appears to have changed, but lots of auxiliary things haven't started to appear, then to be honest, it's probably because it needs a reboot. Sometimes you need to restart everything for everything to burst back into life. So this is one of those times. So reconnected again. That is all looking very good. Um, because uh, we haven't got the menu, I'll just click back into the setup menu and then we should have our mandatory hardware. So we've done frame type, accelerometer calibration, compass. Next one then is the radio calibration. Now I already showed you how to set the radio up and again, all covered in the documentation. Now we need to check that it's going to work. So throttle is on the right channel. Rudder is moving in the right direction. Left is low, right is high. Uh, aileron is the same. Left is low, right is high. And then the way it should work is as I pull the stick back for elevator, it goes high, push it forward, it goes low. So that looks good. The only other, th other thing I've got is uh, which switch did I use? This one. So channel 5 is the mode, which by default for Copter is where it needs to be. So I'm going to say calibrate, say OK, and then we're going to move all of the controls to its limits. Don't go mad pushing it into the corners. Just use your normal travel that you would use as you're flying around. Move each of the controls, including the mode switch, and then click OK. And now we have the basic pieces all set. We are almost there. Now the only other thing that I'll mention is we can change the motor outputs in here but for now we'll leave it at the default and we'll wire it as the default in the next video. And the last thing you can do is flick the switch and change the flight modes. Uh, while we're in here we'll set it to stabilize. We'll set the middle position to something like loiter which allows us to test the GPS and the high position we'll set to good old return to home. Let's click on save modes. Right, we are ready for the next video, so join me in that one where we'll take this setup and start installing it into the multi-rotor. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.